This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. President Biden made history Friday, nominating federal judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the U.S. Supreme Court. If confirmed, she would be the first black woman to serve as Supreme Court justice. She'd also be the fourth person of color, the sixth woman of the 115 justices in the high court's history. Judge Jackson previously served as a clerk for Justice Stephen Breyer, who announced his retirement in January. While running for office, Biden promised to nominate a black woman for the Supreme Court. This is Judge Brown Jackson speaking Friday at the White House after accepting Biden's nomination. If I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed as the next associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, I can only hope that my life and career my love of this country and the Constitution, and my commitment to upholding the rule of law and the sacred principles upon which this great nation was founded, will inspire future generations of Americans. Before she was a judge, Katenji Brown Jackson worked on behalf of Guantanamo prisoners as an assistant public defender. She went on to become a federal trial judge and currently sits on D.C.'s federal appellate court. Judge Jackson ended her address Friday by talking about Constance Baker Motley, who, in 1966, became the nation's first black woman to serve as a federal judge. As it happens, I share a birthday with the first black woman ever to be appointed as a federal judge, the Honorable Constance Baker Motley. We were born exactly 49 years to the day apart. Today, I proudly stand on Judge Motley's shoulders, sharing not only her birthday, but also her steadfast and courageous commitment to equal justice under law. Judge Motley's life and career has been a true inspiration to me as I have pursued this professional path. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, I can only hope that my life and career, my love of this country and the Constitution, and my commitment to upholding the rule of law and the sacred principles upon which this great nation was founded will inspire future generations of Americans. Senate Democratic leaders say they hope to vote to confirm Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court by mid April. For more, we're joined by Tomiko Brown Nagan, Dean of Harvard University's Radcliffe Institute, professor of constitutional law at Harvard Law School, member of the History Department at Harvard. She's also the author of the book Civil Rights Queen Constance Baker Motley and the Struggle for Equality, which just came out this month. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Dean. If you could start off by talking about the significance of the nomination of Katenji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. Happy to, Amy. This moment has been a long time coming, and now that it's finally arrived, it is a great and historic moment for our country. I am very proud to see this appointment, or nomination, rather, that validates the long struggle for equal workplace opportunity. Uh, and it's especially important to validate that principle at the U.S. Supreme Court, the institution that, of course, is charged with interpreting our Constitution and laws. It is a great moment, and I'm proud to, to, to witness it. Can you talk about her history um, and then talk about the right-wing attack on President Biden for saying he would nominate a black woman? You mean Judge Jackson's history? Oh, sorry, Judge, yes, Katenji Brown Jackson. Yes. Well, she is a well-qualified, eminently qualified nominee. She earned her educational credentials at Harvard College and then Harvard Law School graduating with honors, and then uh, clerked uh, several, for several just, judges, rather, and Justice Breyer. Uh, she has vast and relevant legal experience, having worked for the U.S. Sentencing Commission, uh, for uh, private law firms, and for the Public Defender's Office. And it is that latter uh, experience that is raising some 
controversy on the part of uh, some uh, conservatives who are claiming that that experience as a public defender is somehow uh, disqualifying for someone who would serve on the U.S. Supreme Court, and I disagree. I want to go back to 1993. The Supreme Court bar gathered to honor the late Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. It was Judge Motley who spoke at the event. The first time I came to this court was February the 15th, 1948, when, as a member of Thurgood Marshall's staff, at the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, I came here to Washington to hear his argument in the restrictive covenant cases. Those cases resulted in a decision by the Supreme Court barring state enforcement of racially restrictive covenants in residential areas. At that time, Washington was a segregated town. We could not stay in white hotels or eat in white restaurants. Even the cab service was segregated. So that um, is um, the late, uh, great Constance Baker Motley. And you certainly are a scholar of her life. Your book just came out. It's called Civil Rights Queen, Constance Baker Motley and the Struggle for Equality. Talk about the significance of what happened, what, more than half a century ago. Um, and the fact that Katenji Brown Jackson raised her in accepting the nomination on Friday. Well, I think it was a sign of uh, good character on the part of Judge Jackson for pointing to what I have uh, been saying, which is that this nominee would stand on the shoulders of Constance Baker Motley, who, when she was appointed by President Johnson in 1966, uh, accomplished uh, something historic, the first black woman appointed to the federal bench. And I will note that although she too was eminently qualified, there were those who uh, attacked her and said that she should not be appointed precisely because of her work defending the civil rights movement. There were those who said that uh, because of that experience, she couldn't be fair to all litigants, and that criticism followed her onto the bench. And in one of her most well-known decisions, she rejected a demand from an attorney uh, to recuse from a discrimination case on the grounds that as a black woman, she couldn't be fair. And as a civil rights lawyer, she couldn't be fair, arguing that identity alone is not a basis for rejecting uh, a, a judge in a case, and it is a decision that has been cited time and time again to reject criticisms of judges based on their practice background, uh, on their race, sex, uh, sexual orientation, and so forth. Can you talk more about uh, Constance Baker Motley's life and the parallels you see to today? Um, it is always uh, difficult, um, uh, fraught, when you say someone is nominated as the first when this should have happened so long ago. It really should have, uh, Amy. And uh, I, I very specifically am stating that this nomination validates equal workplace opportunity, because for so long, uh, we have not done that. There, there has been uh, pushback against um, you know, qualified uh, nominees in a variety of areas, including the federal judiciary, as I just mentioned, uh, on uh, grounds that amount to ideological attacks. Uh, Motley, she was one of the chief legal tacticians for the civil rights movement, working alongside her mentor, uh, Thurgood Marshall. She helped uh, uh, to litigate Brown versus Board of Education and a variety of other landmark civil rights precedents, including uh, ones that desegregated public education in the South. 
Uh, she argued and won nine of 10 cases at the Supreme Court, including a precedent uh, on behalf of the right to counsel for criminal defendants. Uh, she, she was just a, a superstar in, in terms of her um, professional success. And certainly one could say the very same thing about Judge Jackson, her experience, the variety of experiences she has had as a lawyer uh, are just terrific to see. And I am especially happy that she would be the first justice since Thurgood Marshall to have represented criminal defendants. Uh, the, the, the service of public defenders is vital to our constitutional system, of course, they help to validate the Sixth Amendment to the uh, Constitution. Effective assistance of counsel is vital to the legitimacy of our entire legal system. And thus, I truly am puzzled by those who are pushing back uh, against her on the basis of her having served that role. It's Our Bill of Rights is, is sacred, uh, many would say, in other uh, circumstances, and uh, Judge Jackson was helping to uh, affirm the values and the rights uh, in that uh, uh, set of uh, amendments to the Constitution through her role. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Tomiko Brown Nagan, dean of the Harvard Radcliffe Institute, professor of constitutional law at Harvard Law School, member of the history department at Harvard University. Her new book, Civil Rights Queen, Constance Baker Motley and the Struggle for Equality.